has been raining this morning, although it, thankfully it stopped. As you can see, the clouds are still dark, so it might rain tonight. But I'll take whatever time that I can. If you joined the live stream last Friday or saw the video on my channel, then you would know that I intend to use this planter as an area for all of my propagations. This is a huge planter as you can see. It's probably somewhere between 12 to 16 feet. Because as far as I know, this is probably 4.5 meters in length. So that's a lot of space for now. <laughs> I'll probably be using the, the far half for leaf propagations and the rest would be for cuttings. And I believe this spot is perfect for them because they are right by the fence. And it's also near the north fence which means that it's going to get a lot of shade throughout the day. Another thing you need to know is that it is August and August is the final month of winter in the southern hemisphere which means that spring is right around the corner. This planter could not have come at a better time because I am going to start propagating really soon. In this episode, I'm going to start that by harvesting my imbricata. I've got lots and lots of pups growing now, and some of them are getting a decent enough size. And by removing them now, that means they would get a head start into spring, because by that time, they would have their own roots already, and they would have an early start into the growing season. But before I get to harvesting, I'm going to do some last minute adjustments to the planter. I would need to fill up the base and determine how much soil I would need to get. That way I would know how many cubic meters I would need to order from SoilWorks. Now before I begin, I would need to know that these planks are level. And to do that, I'm going to remove the plank, set it on top of the post and just measure the plank. Let's have a look. This part is a bit higher compared to this. I would need to lower this or maybe just leave with having the wood come out a bit.
which means I'm ready to fill it up with soil but unfortunately I do not have the soil yet and I need to calculate and compute how much of the soil I would need and in order to do that I would need to measure the volume of this planter I would be filling it up to here I guess or maybe a bit lower that's half of the highest layer here each plank is 200 millimeters and I would need 2.5 of those so that makes 2.5 times 200 that's 500 millimeters or 50 centimeters by my calculations i would need 1.4 cubic meters and my mixture is usually composed of soil mixed with pebbles i should probably fill it up with more of these rocks i should fill it up as high as i can go and use up all of the rocks that i have that way I would need a less amount of soil. I could probably raise the rock level until here or maybe even half of the lowest layer and that depends on how much rocks I have left in the front. Now that I'm done with the planter, I'd start harvesting the imbricata. I would need some containers. Going to start with this ones right here. There's a lot on this plant. I usually harvest them when the days are warm. It's still winter right now, but it's towards the end of winter. And by the time these pups have established, it would be warmer then, it would be spring. So I think harvesting them now is not much of a problem. When dealing with clumps like this, I usually find it easier if I start from the bottom rather than going from the top. So I look for the bottom most pups. In this case, it looks like it's this one. And I try to get under it, try to reach the stem. Once I found it, just apply some pressure and there it comes off easily that way so just to show you I have my hand under the whole rosette just going to remove the leaves so I have it under the rosette imagine holding a champagne glass it's pretty much the same thing so dig deep with your fingers do it that, that way just cup it then either twist it or just pull, you know? And I've always been using this technique to harvest imbricata. Let's go do it for the rest of them. The best way to do this is to have a firm hold and just push it sideways. Pushing it from side to side will give it enough pressure to break it off from the parent plant. I like seeing these clumps by the mailbox, so for aesthetic reasons, I'm going to leave them as this. If you want to be efficient, you have to grab them in such a way that each pop that you get would give you better access for the next one. Take this one for instance, to be able to get to this, I might want to remove this first. I have a vantage point from here because there's no other pop on this side so I could place my fingers in, push it back, 
So now I have the space, the leverage to pick the other pups. So all I have to do, I could just gently push this towards this side. And do the same for the rest of them. I don't even have to apply enough pressure. Just gently pushing them. And that would be enough. So all you need to do is to create a gap and push the rest of them into the gap. Here's another example. It's hard to get to this two. There's one here at the bottom. Another hard to reach one because it's really close to the ground. It's hugging the ground. So what I could do is to try removing this middle one. And I could just simply push this one towards a gap. And off it goes. Pretty simple, once you get the hang of it. Performing that exercise, I now have two overflowing crates of imbricata and I'm not sure where I want to place them for now. I might have to find a spot at the back, just plant them randomly and allow them to grow. Special thanks to my Patreon sponsors that's Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Gloria Ninotti, Tamil Narvaez, Linda Leal and everyone else who have pledged their support on Patreon. Thank you so much, without your support I would not have been able to finish this planter before the end of winter. I can't wait to fill this up and kickstart my propagations. I'm almost ready for spring. Here's the imbricata pups that I harvested. All two crates, they are both overflowing. I'm not sure what I want to do with them, <laughs> except that let them grow a bit more. By planting them in the ground now, I'd be sure that by summer that they would be hardy enough to withstand the heat. Our summer starts in December and there's still a lot of time for them to adjust to the sunlight. In case you missed it, I held the live stream last Saturday. It was around 2 p.m. my time. It felt a bit nerve-wracking at first because it felt like I was speaking in front of a live audience and I've got stage fright. But we got through in the end. In spite of all of that, I had lots of fun doing the live stream and I'm now thinking that maybe I could do a garden review live at the end of the month. Well, at the, at, during the last Saturday of every month. I'll be scheduling them tentatively at 2 p.m. my time, the last Saturday of each month. But I'll move them around depending on my personal circumstances because sometimes I might not be available on those days. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you won't miss out on any future episodes of Let's Plant. Let's Plant comes out every Tuesday morning my time, that would be in the evening, Eastern time. And I put out a recap every Saturday evening my time, that would be Saturday morning Eastern time. And if you haven't seen it yet, please check out my Instagram, the series Capades, and I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag Daily Echeveria. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.